Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video on the channel. It is update day and the patch notes have just been released. So we're going to be diving straight in, taking a look at everything that's been said, all the different notes, every little nut and cranny and all the daft details. We're going to dive straight in. So if you enjoy the video, want to help support me and the channel and stuff, help me out, hit the like button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's jump straight in and see what load of gibberish and all the other massive notes that's going to be inside this thing. All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, the Fallout World update uh, patch notes. Here we are. So it is the update highlights, new ways to play, experience Appalachia like never before with public worlds. Each public world features a specialized game setting fit to theme, and they are available to all players. So there's public worlds and custom worlds. If you missed my uh, previous videos, if you see down here your world made order, Fallout first members can now create custom worlds. So custom worlds are for Fallout first uh, people that can actually change and adjust the settings themselves. Public worlds are ones but there's the make and make available to everyone. Now going on to the next bit, we've also got the daily ops expansion which is coming out and also the nuclear winter rewards are coming out into the, uh, you know, the bloody adventure mode because nuclear winter is getting deactivated as of right now. If you played it, that's it. You can't go back anymore. Right, going into the Jesus bloody Christ, that's some big updates. 23 gig on Microsoft Store, and 23 gig on Xbox, 22 gig on PlayStation. Jesus. Okay, never mind. So, one of the big things, if you have been subscribed and watching the channel today, basically I uploaded a short video earlier on today saying that season five is getting, uh, season six is getting delayed, sorry. And that is because a big bug that came out. So I'm not going to read through all of this uh, unless there's something in the little bit down here. But basically, yeah, season five is extended for two weeks and season six is all be starting once that's over. So until September 21st, that's when it will be uh, ending and season six will be coming out. In the meantime, farm as much XP as you possibly can. Use that XP to then go and get some free atoms on the... Uh, repeatables or if you haven't completed the season yet go and enjoy it and get all the unlockables right going on to fallout world so we've got public worlds like you just said and these are the first five public worlds there's gonna be five here and basically right here it says happy builder which is a reduced camp placement restrictions relaxed building restrictions and all map locations are discovered and pvp has been disabled there's another one called high risk which is no fast travel always on pvp players drop additional loot on death free workbench crafting and legendary item attributes have been disabled okay okay free workbench craft legendary item attributes been disabled so it's an all-out pvp world with no legendaries that sounds pretty mad and uh, dweller must die greatly increased enemy difficulty increased damage increased equipment durability and dark bog weather effects. There's another one called Quantum World, max jump height, no fall damage, nuked creatures and flora, and a quantum storm weather. There's also the last one, which is Butcher's Delight, which is infinite ammo, no vats or melee, attack AP cost, and enhance dis dismemberment, which I don't know, does that mean when you blow apart? I'm not quite sure. However, one big thing about public and custom worlds is whatever XP you gain will not follow you through into the, um, you know what, your adventure mode character. So you've got, when you go into a public world or custom world, your adventure mode character will get duplicated into this new world. Now, I won't be surprised if this causes loads of bugs and people actually manage to duplicate things. I haven't got a clue, but any like leveling up and stuff you do will not carry over to your adventure mode. Another little note as well, public worlds will change once per month. So every single month we'll get a new one out of these five and it'll just go rotating round, rotating round. Kind of like daily ops, how that changes every day. Now, there's a few notes here for custom worlds, which I'll have a quick skim over and read out any of the main ones. So if you've got Fallout first, you can go straight onto the main menu and you can choose custom world options from the player menu and create your new type of world where they can adjust a wide variety of different settings to create Appalachia's, uh, create your own Appalachia that's tailored to your liking. So you create it, click play from the menu, select custom world, hit select world template, and then you can start tinkering with all of the different settings that you want. You can have up to seven friends in there with you. Of course, it's a private world and stuff and they have not 
extended how many people you can actually have in a private world. And also a private worlds mode has now been renamed to private adventure. So there you go. With today's update, they better differentiate it. Blah -de blah. While creating your custom world, you can choose among a broad array of customizable settings and let your imagination run wild with possibilities. Here are some of the options at your disposal. So you've got workshop, which is building previously restricted areas, uh, disable the need for electricity, increase your camp budget and build height and relax building restrictions and more. There's also a combat one, a uh, combat group of settings, sorry, which is infinite enemy spawns, alter PVP rules, adjust enemy difficulty, give yourself infinite ammo, change item durability and more. General settings include disable fast travel uh, or make it free, choose special weather effects including rad storms and nuke zones, as well as new weather effects like quantum storms and dark bog. Add filters for a unique view of Appalachia and adjust jump height, fall damage or even the consequences on death. Now please note, some custom world settings may impact your game client's performance, however you are still free to use them and can always enable or disable them. A little side note as well down here, it says you can edit your custom worlds after you have finished creating them. So even if you've filled all three custom world slots, you can still change them up as needed. So you can go on right and change a setting. Maybe you want to change disable fast travel all of a sudden. You can go on and change that according to this. Uh, going on to the last little bit as well, if you're a Fallout, Fallout first member and you've played in a friend's custom world previously, you'll be able to log into it even if the world owner is offline. That's a bit, that's a bit strange, isn't it? It's kind of like, so it's kind of like having your own private server type of thing. Like, do you know, like in like Minecraft and stuff, you can pay to have your own private server in this, for having Fallout first, you have your own server. So that's quite cool. So like, if you want to do like, I don't know, a building competition or something with your friends or something like that, where you all build up a certain location, you can all come together, and even if you're online, your friends can continue building on and stuff. So that's a really cool point. Uh, to do this, select Custom Worlds from the Player menu, View Worlds, select your friend's world from the Shared World section, and set it to Active. You can then play in that world by selecting Custom Worlds from the Player menu. If you're not currently an Active Fallout First member, don't worry. You can still join your friends who are Fallout First members in the Custom Worlds that they've set up while they're online. All right, so... Can you only, hang on, can you only join them when they're offline if you have, if you are a Fallout First member and you have played in a, ah, oh, right, so you can only do that if you're a Fallout First member. Sorry, I skipped that a little bit. Character progression, here's the main bit. So the progress each of your characters make in public or custom worlds is specific to those worlds and is completely separate from adventure mode. So each separate world that you go into, that'll save diet, like your save data in there type of thing. So if you level up five times in that one specific world, say it's Dave's world or something, and you level up five times in Dave's world, and then you go on to Sharon's world, you'll not have leveled up five times. There you go, some lovely names for you. Um, if you reach your five character limit, characters can be manually unlinked from public or custom worlds at any time. Your character progression in public world will remain available as long as the public world is still active and available for play. Additionally, please note that challenges cannot be completed and you will not earn score, achievements or trophies while playing in a public or custom world. What a load of garbage. Never mind, but it is what it is, I suppose. Right. There is a daily ops expansion. I'm going to scan over this really quick because I've done videos and stuff on it in the past. Basically, new daily ops expansion bringing these double mutation weekend events. So during weekend events, you will get basically d uh, daily ops uh, game mode. But instead of having like one, um, like here's some examples here. So instead of having just like one um, legendary attribute thing, uh, mutation, this is what we're gonna have. So there's all these different ones here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight different varieties that you can uh, come up against. One's blistering, chilling, clouded, relentless, stinging, stalking, unstable, and vaporous. So one example for blistering, they've got the freezing touch and they're also swift-footed. So when they hit you, you will freeze and they're also really fast. So 
as you can see that is a list there if you want to pause it and read through them feel free but I've gone over them in the past so I'm not going to go over them again on top of this there's also some new locations and new enemies so communists are getting added in and also Arctus Farmer Biome Lab, the Watoga High School, and Uncanny Caverns are also getting added into Daily Ops to freshen it up a little bit. In this update as well, we've also got a bunch of new items coming in. So we've got the Blood Eagle Auto Grenade Launcher Paint, the Blood Eagle Skull Lord Helmet and Outfit, a Myalurk King Tube, which is obviously the big tubes like the Yaogwai ones, and obviously the uh, Soup Mutant and Wendigos and Scorched. We've also got a new hazmat suit coming out, which is the black hazmat suit. We've got the Soul Survivor Lever Action Rifle, Mechanic's Best Friends Pipe Wrench, and Arctic Marine Armor, which I believe is going to be a skin for the Marine Armor. I, In fact, no, I don't think it is. I think it's a new type. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I did a video on it, and I've got it all covered. So if you need help with that, search it up. I've got a nice video out there with all the pictures and stuff that you need to see what's coming in. Additional daily ops improvements. We've addressed a number of issues that are, were affecting the Mothman hatchlings and these cute but deadly creatures will once again appear when the cultists are the new or, or the current daily ops enemy group. That is fantastic. I've never came up against the Mothman ha uh, hatchlings. So really looking forward to them coming in. That's going to be absolutely brilliant. And then mutations. We've got volatile enemy explosion damage has been adjusted and now does health percentage based damage that can be partially mitigated by anti-explosion effects. Okay, reset timer. We've added a timer so you can more easily check when the next daily ops resets will occur. You can find the timer in the Intel section on the detailed daily ops menu after selecting daily ops. Very nice little things just there. Now, exciting stuff here for the Nuclear Winter Mode rewards. So let's have a look. So we've got the Nuclear Winter Pennant, which is coming in. So anyone that played a single game of Nuclear Winter will get this pennant. Um, all you got to do is literally, all you had to do was complete literally one match. And it'll be in the wall decor category. So very, very simple there. And it will be within, it'll be active within two weeks of the following today's update. We've also got perk coins. So here is where it got really confusing last time. They decided to kind of change up their plan with this. And now this is basically how it's going to happen. Also, there you go. You've got something to look at while instead of, <laughs> instead of just the thing. All right, so let's, let's continue on. We've got down here, so we've got perk coins. With today's update, we're granting perk coins to players based on their progression in Nuclear Winter Mode so that you can give your legendary perk card collection a boost. So you will receive six perk coins per Nuclear Winter perk card you earned from the Nuclear Winter progression system. You also get one perk coin per Overseer ticket you collected. It's so, so confusing that is though. Like how are you meant to know how many perk cards you unlocked? I haven't got a clue how many I had. Uh, this one though, quite easy. I think I had 40 of them or something. 40 or, I don't know. Not a clue. Um, these perk coins have already been added to your account and will be available to you as soon as you log in. Going to be bugs with that, I bet you as well. Some people have like hundreds or thousands or something. Not hundreds because you can't get hundreds from it. But they'll probably have thousands and it'll be broken. Right, cosmetic rewards. Many of the cosmetic rewards that could be earned by climbing through the ranks are all now available in these events here. So, a colossal problem, encrypted, project paradise, scorched earth, limited time events such as the festive scorched and the treasure hunters. And there you go. Now, exclusive, now legacy is the nuclear winter trophies and statues. You cannot get them at all. They'll probably have them in the atomic shop like they did with the tricentennial thing that you weren't meant to get, but you know. We'll not talk about that, will we? Right. <laughs> right. Going on to the next bit, we've got uh, some user interface. Junk acquired from scrapping items will now appear in the Pip Boys new tab. Ideal. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum, Vault 51. I'll have a quick scan through this and anything that stands out, I'll tell you. If not, we'll cut it all out because I'm sure you don't want to hear me blabbering on about absolute rubbish. All right, a nice little touch here as well. Nice little update for you. So I forgot to mention this. With uh, Nuclear Winter ending, I mentioned this in like another news video the other day, but Vault 51 is now becoming a new explorable location in the game. It's already in the game, but you couldn't get into it before. So now with Nuclear Winter closing, you can now go inside and it'll be pretty cool. Might have to do a little tour of that for you. Who knows? We'll, we'll wait and see. Don't you steal the bloody idea, you criminals. But we'll see. 
A nice little one there. Fixed an issue that could cause a player to become stuck in an emote animation loop. That was happening constantly, so I'm happy to fix that one. Bloody hell. So going through all of the lists, like continuing on reading to find the actual ones worth telling us about. Like, you know, like some of these are just bloody waste of time. Cultist goals now correctly count towards challenges that require to kill cultists. Marvellous. Right, <laughs> going on to what I was going to say. There's See how many bugs there is just relating to the actual Mothman hatchlings? So there's four straight off the back there. So fix an issue that could cause Mothman hatchlings to become invincible. Uh, they no longer become un unresponsive. No longer get stuck in walls after teleporting. And no longer become invisible while attacking. Like, did these things just completely break the game or something? That makes no sense whatsoever. Um... There's a bunch of other random ones here, so I'm going to keep reading through to tell you anything worth telling. But, at the minute, it's just a load of gibberish like it normally is, where they just keep telling us more and more stuff's being patched. I mean, I'm going to clear what they are yet. The stuff we know is broken. Don't bloody get patched, does it? But never mind. Have a drink and continue. Oh, well, that's a load of bloody rubbish. Enemies with volatile... Um, Enemies with Volatile no longer damage other enemies on death. I feel like that should be like a knock on effect. If they're exploding, surely to God they should like hurt the enemies beside them, surely. Never mind. Oh my God, look at that. Now Manhunt is a quest that I do quite a lot. I always do it, it's a very easy one, nice easy bit of XP. And they've changed it so Vats can now target Mad Dog Malone. Hey ho. Grenadier now probably increases the blast damage radius of grenades. You know the thing that it's meant to do? It does it now. Also a little side note, Minerva has uh, had a bunch of plans removed. Ones that you can actually buy elsewhere like Foundation or whatever. They've been taken out because she's meant to sell things that nowhere else sells. Um, or like rare stuff for discounts and stuff. So yeah, that's been gone now. Well I've just read them all and they're all... A lot of rubbish. Nothing kind of, wait, nothing really crazy to stand out. Normally we have one, unless I've missed it, but normally there is always one that kind of really does stand out. And you're like, oh my god, what have they done? Like, break camp building or something like this. And there's nothing really like that. It's all kind of smaller bugs that you're just not really, you're like, maybe you've seen once. So, like, Protectrons can no longer become stuck in the computer lab inside vault -Tec University. Corrected several locations around Appalachia where players could become stuck. Fixed a location where Paige can become stuck. Loads of stuff like that. Like, it's a load of rubbish. You don't really need to hear it. So, I am not going to just keep blabbering on through all of them. But that is the patch notes for this update, guys. Downtime will be on for a few hours now. So, hopefully it's up before Atomic Shop reset time. And I'll get an Atomic Shop video up for you as well. Because, you know... Why not upload three videos in one day? <laughs> but yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you've enjoyed and found this video informative, make sure to help support me and the channel by hitting that like button. And of course, if you're new, subscribe, you know, try and hit 20,000 subscribers, so that'd be awesome. And that is it for the patch notes, guys. Feel free if you want to go read them for yourself or double check over anything. I'll post the link in the description. Same as the link for the Discord and everything like that. So yeah, that's it for now. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Big. Big.